Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about the public perception on Craig Wright and how it is possibly changing as to his identity as Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, and I'm going to support that with some some new facts here as we're coming up on the COPA trial versus Wright in 2024. All right, so public perception is uh, it could play into as a factor into a trial situation in a court. So, you know, depending on what the public perception is, if there's a way that they can value that and the attorneys can argue it, it could it could weigh in with some credibility. So let's take a look here. Okay, so here's what's here's what's changed. Now, if you go just to a regular Google search, I'm in an incognito window, so it doesn't recognize where I'm at. And then you just type in Craig Wright. All right. There we go. Now you're gonna see the the new search that's coming are gonna come up. We've got an article from Coindesk and then the, the second post right here. And a regular Google search is Craig Wright is Satoshi Nakamoto. All right, so this is, I would say it's, you know, somebody, some smart people were able to figure out how to get this number two on the page. So let's take a look at that. Now in this article, basically this, uh, this blog, Hacker Noon, was able to, it's arguing that it's Craig Wright, Satoshi Nakamoto. And it's gonna, and it's putting forth a 20 point reason, you know, basically for why it contends that he is. And it's, uh, you know, it starts out with the, you know, the, the, the COPA versus Wright trial, which aims to determine whether or not Craig Wright is, is truly the identity behind Satoshi Nakamoto. So it's a landmark mark case and it's poised to tackle that question uh, against the Silicon Valley giants. I will consider this, so for the first time, the legal battle hinges directly on the unmasking once and for all of the Enigma founder of Bitcoin, you know, and then it, it raises 20 separate points here, which, uh, which start with the proficiency of Bitcoin of why, you know, he talked about in 2019, how he, his proficiency in the actual Bitcoin script, the digital cash experience uh, far before the uh, creation of Bitcoin, the multidisciplinary expertise, his, uh, his computer science background as a businessman, inventor, found co-founder of Enchain, you know, one of the, the, the largest patent holders in the blockchain space in an IT background, expert witness, testimony background and doctorate and master's in law in uh, in international com commercial law and academic degree that would aid Bitcoin creator in its creation. So he's he's got the academic background. Understanding Bitcoin scripts and codes, insights into complex Bitcoin mechanics, talking, you know, basically the um, idea of smart contracts and micro pay payments globally on Bitcoin. Bitcoin's unique properties, including the scalability to billions of transactions per second. Second, he talked about with uh, Bitcoin Satoshi Vision. The security models. He's argued about the uh, Bitcoin comes from an economic ex incentives rather, rather than just computational power. So it's secure because of what's later talked about as a Byzantine general problem. So uh, knowledge about Turing completeness, being the first one to be outspoken about Turing completeness that Bitcoin could was actually Turing complete. This was a controversial stance be, you know, until the potential that Bitcoin script was more broadly acknowledged by the crypto community. Scrypt is the example. That's the company that's that's written the language uh, to use turn Bitcoin into smart contracts. And then witness testimonies. Gavin and Andreessen earlier, uh, you know, he's come out and stated it after the the book that I got to correct. It's uh, Andrew O'Hagan's book, Satoshi Affairs. You can read all about the firsthand witness of the signing with Gavin Andreessen there. And then of course, all these other people, you know, that uh, did an oath bound testimonies, Stephen Matthews, they were under oath under penalty of perjury, Neville Sinclair, Robert Jenkins, Donald Lehman, Max Lehman, Shahab Yosef. These are some of the experts. Okay. Some experts and some from that had personal knowledge that testified that, um, that right was Satoshi, the creator of Bitcoin, early Bitcoin involvement, such as the Bitcoin purchasing the bitcoin.org domain name. He's talked about that in the release of the white paper and on the 2018 video shot at Enchain headquarters, like an hour and a half video that he talked about how he had proof of that. Uh, you know, it may have been on the internet somewhere, but that's my belief right there is that's going to be the silver bullet that will come out at trial is an, it's not necessarily that he has, he has it. Remember, he doesn't necessarily need it. It's, does he have the witness? Does he have the expert from the bank in 2008 that work there and is working there today that can come forward and bring the document to show that, hey, yeah, our bank records show that this man, you know, Craig Wright, purchased Bitcoin.org using our one of our credit cards.
that's the key. It's the witness, not the document. The tax records and legal investigations. I mean, the guy was, was uh, he declared, he declared Bitcoin on his taxes in 2008 and 2009. That's come out already. The copyright. Remember, he filed that case against Cobra and the English High Court delivered the verdict that Dr. in Dr. Wright's favor, declaring that he, that uh, Bitcoin's white paper and issued, issued an order for Cobra to cease the infringement over the copyright. And the, including removing the Bitcoin white paper from Bitcoin.org's website and its associated GitHub repository in the United Kingdom, which they failed to do. And of course, the patents. He's got an extensive path, patent for, fortress already issued to himself, which go all the way back to, I, I mean, it's going back 10, starting 10 years now, but there's many that have, have fully been issued. They're not just in application stage. And then, of course, Enchain has a, has a ton too. That, those are all searchable. I mean, I'm talking into the thousand. So uh, Satoshi Vision, right? It's been instrumental in development of Bitcoin SV, you know, which is the, uh, you know, claims to be claims to be the original Bitcoin protocol and de deriving the original Bitcoin, uh, the original vision of Satoshi Nakamoto. And then, of course, the, the the versatility. He's talked extensively and had knowledge about the versatility and being able to, hand to handle complex transactions, including smart contracts. That goes back to S Crypt, where that was proven, such as ordinals, NFTs, you know, and you know, shout out to here insights and n locking time sequence. This is he's talked early on about the Bitcoin's ability to have n lock and sequence transactions. Now, this has come out with the uh, Hodlocker. Hodlocker, you know, credit to Jack Lou, I believe in the idea, idea man on that. And he ran with it and then you're able to lock Bitcoins on chain and put them in trust, let's say, for a future generation where as opposed to spending money money on attorney's fees, you can lock them in there and then give the you know, ward them off to your nephew or your son. And 10 years from now, they're, he can download it with a, with a proper uh, private key and they're not accessible until that time, right? Talked about that earlier. And then here's the Byzantine general problem. Wright has written and spoken about it and uh, emphasizing, he's emphasized economic incentives that ensure network consensus. So his interpretation of how Bitcoin solves the problem through economic means is unique and aligns with a deep understanding of Bitcoin's consensus mechanism. So it Byzantine generals makes it incentive based to it's more, it's more uh in it, there's more of an incentive to mine and follow the rules and be rewarded with Bitcoin because of the the fact that you've got to have proof of work, you've got to spend money to to mine it as opposed to attacking it. The burden of proof was shifted back in uh, number 19 when Wired and Gizmodo and the media suggested that Wright was maybe Satoshi. They ousted him, he came out you know, and did his best to hide and be completely private, but he had no other choice. He had a BBC, right? Later confirmed their speculation during the BBC interview. Crypto community wasn't happy. And it's funny how the crypto community themselves, they all say, oh, everyone is Satoshi. Everyone but right. Everyone is. Every one of you guys is. Everyone but this one particular guy who has the most credibility and the more more likely than not, and now will be determined by the court. And then, of course, the Bitcoin mining holdings. This is interesting. The the Florida jury ruled in the Wright case, uh, Wright v. Kleiman, Kleiman v. Wright case, that Wright did not have to pay the half of the 1.1 million bitcoins to the family of this late business partner. So the case centered around the Bitcoin's holdings worth about 71 billion, and the jury awarded 142 million in intellectual property rights to a joint venture between Wright and Kleiman, uh, which. Uh, which con contributed to the early blockchain and cryptocurrency de development. So basically that, which was then withheld, it was sustained. I mean, it, the, the Court of Appeal in the 11th Circuit held that ver verdict. The appeal did not go back. So that's sound law right now that, you know, Wright was the, you know, had the intellectual property. He was an intellectual property. Hunter, uh, he was one of the, uh, he, had the, he did not have to pay the one point. 1 million Bitcoins. And it's also interesting here in that case, which I haven't read and verified this part yet, but Wright stated that he would prove his ownership of the Bitcoins if he won the trial. Well, here we are now. He won that trial, right? Here we are now. He stated that he would prove, he would prove his ownership. And he plans to donate much of his fortune to charity. Uh, I guess at this time it was 71 billion. So it's significant. So, you know, we're eagerly anticipating the the giant, uh, you know, the giant outcome of the effect of this case, you know, and it's it's bigger than it's freaking it's it's monumental. It's a it's literally you know the biggest case of our time. This much on the line, 
and how it's going to change things. You know, it's important that we get the word out there. And I think what's what, how public perception now could be affected because this is the first time I've been able to see uh, a fresh Google search where he's coming up to saying Craig Wright is Satoshi Nakamoto. That's on a Google search right there. Check it yourself. So public perception. I mean, the court goes in there and they search the name and they see that right up there. And that that's potentially public perception because, you know, a lot of people are going to view that article. It's probably going to get millions of views, however ever it's checked or however many views searches he gets. I don't know, but it, it, it could affect public reception. And um, that's uh, another key article. I would definitely recommend getting it out there. Don't forget, it'll be on January 9th on the Coin Geek Live with Kurt Walker Jr. And then the London Blockchain Convention is going to be in May. And I am giving out the um, invite to the defense of the defense and of the plaintiff and the um, excuse me, the, the defense and the plaintiff in the case itself to come to the London Blockchain Association for a roundtable and recap on that case. Recap on the case in a roundtable and discuss the impact of what it will, how, what, 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 what it means from the experts' opinions, from their own personal knowledge. And they were there. And hopefully I'll be also uh, going myself at the actual trial. And we'll see. All right. So like, comment, subscribe. This is Gavin Mail. Hand cash link below if you like videos like this. Shout out to uh, Jack Lou for the, you know, putting out that hod locker. He did a great job. Of course, the man himself and Calvin Air. Big thanks to him. Xiao Lu. A lot of people, man, that uh, they're really making things happen. So it's really just a, it's, it's a, it's an exciting time. I love the, I loved watching this court case unfold as it's coming down to the wire right now. So, and it's not going to be immediate in January. There's going to be take time for the decision to roll out. It could be months. It could be a year. Who knows? I mean, after that, but I mean, let's keep our fingers crossed. This is a quick decision. We don't know. At least we'll be able to see what happens. All right. So like comment, subscribe, baby. And I'll see you at the very top.